one of the things that I think is striking when you look at the history of anarchism is that it's at its most popular it was almost an organic movement and answering community needs the Jewish anarchists in New York in the 1890s in Spain obviously but Argentina as you mentioned mm. France isn't community also being destroyed by things such as technology where now there are more communities in cyberspace then maybe the type of community that you or I may have grown up, myself, I'm, you know, just a coal mining community yeah. where you knew everyone you knew and everyone. everyone knew you, and yes, there were tensions, but you had that sense of relationships. Isn't that really going very quickly, and isn't technology helping that go? Well, in my view, technology is a pretty neutral instrument. Right. It could go in that direction, it could go in opposite directions. Right. I mean, uh, technology could, in fact, be used to... Uh, uh, let the uh, workforce in a factory run it without any managers sure. by providing people at the workbench with real-time information that would enable them to join with others in making mm -hmm. sensible decisions. That's another use of technology. Sure, absolutely. Of course, that technology did not get developed. No. <laughs> uh, and the fact that there are very interesting studies of how it does work. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the main studies was done by some of the best was done by David Noble, who used to be here and a little too radical. Yeah. He doesn't need here anymore. Yeah. But he did some terrific work on uh, a lot of things. But the main one, the main one of the main topics he studied was what's called numerical processing. That is, computer-controlled machine tool production, that kind of thing. Uh, and that was like everything else developed in the military system, where you can do it at public cost. Right. Uh, but uh, it, it was designed. Uh, there were a lot of different ways of designing it. He points out. So one way of designing it would have been to uh, pr uh, eliminate managerial levels and put decision making into the hands of skilled mechanics, uh, who would who sort of knew what they're doing. They're usually the people who know more anyway than the guys in the offices upstairs. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, I'm sure it was true in the coal mine. Yeah, yeah, the guys yeah, yeah, in the yeah. coal mine work, the guys down yeah, there, yeah, not the one who's sitting yeah, in an office yeah. in New York somewhere. But uh, So put the decision-making into their hands, and the technology could have been designed for that. And studies were done showing that would even increase profits. But it was done the opposite way. It was done in such a way as to increase levels of management control, which is highly inefficient, to de-skill mechanics. Uh, and to uh, turn them into uh, robots who yeah. would just push the buttons. Yes. Well, that's a choice as to how to use technology. And it's a kind of class warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has nothing to do with the inherent nature of technology. And I think the same is true here. Right. However, the, po the point you make is an interesting one, and I don't, you know, I don't know what's going to come of it. But it is true that there are virtual communities yes. which are very real. I mean, yes. I would say that 95% of my close friends I've never seen. Yes. We just uh, interact all the time on the internet. And, you know, my age, I figure it's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> but when I see my grandchildren do it, yes. I don't like it yes. much.